Wiki wiki Slam! It's another contest at Addicted Hobbies and Games, and we're doing this. <laughs> the model I'm building is a Slan Star Master from Warhammer Age of Sigmar. I prepared to prime and paint for subassembly, but I want to add something before I proceed. I'm going to use an X-Acto blade to poke a small pilot hole in the indentations that indicate where Slan sits, so I can drill underneath the chair and add a magnet to attach him. Now I just drill out the appropriate butt cheek and add the other magnet. It looks pretty good, but let's test it. Oh yeah, that's magnificent. I'll start by dry fitting the parts, completing the subassembly, and selecting the optional variants for my model. I couldn't really decide on which variants to use, so I'm just going to try to cram as many as I can. I'll prime each piece of the subassembly individually, starting with matte black, adding a layer of terminata stone on top, and then using the makeup brushes with a layer of matte white for that highlight pop. I'm going to use Army Painter's Sand Golem Speed Paint to cover the throne and all the ruins. The box art shows Slan sitting on a cold grey slab, and I thought it'd be nice to do something a little different by adding a sort of Aztec look to this. I used blends of Strachan and Moot Green for the moss, and Aramin Blue for the turquoise stone. I'm going to apply this Aramin Blue throughout all the triangular mosaics and all the stone inlays throughout the throne. Next, I'm going to apply Plasmatic Bolt Speed Paint to these ruins on the bottom. We'll cover up these tusks with a layer of skeleton bone followed by a layer of pallet bone. Now we can add some pops of color to all those fun little details. The Slan Star Masters are a series of slimy celestial sorcerers with supremely sublime summoning skills to support their Seraphon siblings. So I surmise that a stellar solar system on his seat would be super satisfactory. Sweet. Now that we've painted our sweet little tiny solar system, we're going to glue all our pieces and assemble it into one, and we're going to cover up that little planet we just painted. But don't worry about that, just remember it's there. I'm applying runic grey to all the wood, and more sand golem to the runes at the base. Now I should mention that before I glued all these pieces together, I sealed them with a matte clear coat varnish. I did this to protect the initial paint layers from being physically damaged and scratched, as well as make them resistant to staining and reactivation. Even though there's a layer of clear coat to protect the sand golem, I'm trying very hard not to splatter additional speed paints on top of it. I used a thin down Averlin Sunset to kind of spot remove any mistakes that I did make, and it also was a very nice complementary edge highlight for the lightest spots of sand golem. To paint all the vegetation, I used Absolution Green, Malignant Green, Moot Green, and Straken Green. I felt that that was a lot of green to put across the model, so I went back afterwards and broke up some of that green by dry brushing purples and pinks on the leaves. Okay, our throne's looking pretty good right now. Let's move on to the slan of the hour. This episode of Paint Hand Slan was brought to you by... No time for that! So you might have guessed that I'm going to paint Slan to resemble a poison dart frog. So I'm going to take a second to nerd out about these colorful little boogers. The poison dart frog is the common name referring to a group of frogs from the family Dendrobatidae. These frogs are native to tropical regions of Central and South America, and the family contains approximately 200 species of frogs. 
Species from the Dendrobatidae family can range from less than 1.5 cm to approximately 6 cm in length and they are diurnal in nature. They avoid predation during the daytime by using a defense mechanism known as aposematism. This is symbolized by their bright coloration paired with their high levels of skin toxicity. The beautiful vibrant colors and patterns serve as a warning to would-be predators saying, don't eat me, I'm poisonous. The poisons these frogs excrete are known as lipophilic alkaloid toxins and they are derived through exogenous means. This means that the frogs can't synthesize the toxins independently, but rather the toxins are derived through a bioaccumulation of an alkaloid rich diet within their natural habitat. Species of Dendrobatidae that are captive bred and fed controlled diets don't actually produce toxins in their skin, but they still retain the ability to bioaccumulate these alkaloid toxins should their diet change. I based Slan off the species known as the Strawberry Poison Dart Frog. But to be honest, I'm starting to think he looks more like a toad than a frog. So maybe I frogged up. Okay, I still got a shitload of details to finish on this thing. But I wasn't finished talking about frogs yet. So I got a few more fun facts to share about these little guys. Even though the family consists of approximately 200 species, only four of them are actually documented to have ever been used for poisoning darts and arrows, all of which came from the Philobatas genus, which are the most toxic frogs in the Dendrobate family. The most toxic of all of them is the Philobatas terribilis, or the golden poison frog. It's theorized that on average, this frog carries enough poison in its skin to kill about 20 grown men. Now, as terrible as that sounds, the toxins in these frogs' skin are also incredibly important to medical research. Many medications ranging from muscle relaxants to painkillers have been derived from studying the alkaloid compounds in the skin of these frogs. The fact the alkaloid compounds are derived from each frog's natural diet means the exogenous development of each species' toxins is likely dependent on its ecological niche. As their environment becomes more threatened by human encroachment, these ecological niches will disappear, and so will our opportunity to learn new things. So you know, save the rainforest, and let's like, trade paper straws for plastic or something. Speaking of rainforests, Slan's base right here is looking pretty lush if I do say so myself. I'm currently adding a little froggy pond to the side here. Now I gotta put a little froggy in the froggy pond. The rest of the base I used Mod Podge, chopped up mosses, and a few flowery tufts. Okay, one more quick frog fact. Did you know tarantulas and frogs share mutualistic relationships? Tarantulas actually keep frogs as pets. Look it up, I'm not even joking. Aw, oh, did I really forget to paint that gem? Ah, oh, false alarm, we're good. Okay, paint hand pals, I'm off to the contest. Wish me luck! Uh, the camera's still on. And your paint's open. Okay, here we are at Addicted Hobbies and Games, checking out the contest. The theme of this contest was large-scale legends, heroes, and HQs, with bases of 60 millimeters or greater. And I have to say, everybody brought their A-game to this one. These entries are goddamn incredible. And, uh, spoiler alert, I didn't place in this contest. You'll just have to follow Addictive Hobbies and Games Facebook page to see who did. Thanks for hanging out with me until the end of the video. I really appreciate you spending your time here with me. Oh wait, before you go, can you find all nine animals on this model? This should make it a bit easier for you. And I told you to remember that solar system, didn't I? Thanks again for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this fat, fabulous, freckled frog. Don't forget to like and subscribe.